Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking Jobs with me, Dr. Rachel Bromnick. And this recording is going to be part of a little series where we're encouraging people to look at the third sector, sometimes called not-for-profit or voluntary organisations. And I really want psychology students to get out there and see what opportunities are really available to you. Because I don't think anyone as a little kid will think, do you know what I'm going to do when I leave uni? I'm going to work for the third sector. So if you stay tuned, I'm going to welcome one of our graduates who works locally in Lincoln and is developing a fantastic career and she's brilliant and inspirational and will tell you all you need to know about getting experience or developing career working in the voluntary sector. So welcome back to Lincoln, Charlotte Greeley! Yay! Oh, Charlotte, thank you for coming in. Yeah, you're one nice. of our finest graduates. And, oh, and also you're one of our finest alumni <laughs> because you're so faithful and come back and share your experiences with everyone. So really appreciate it. I love it because your students ask me so many questions. I know. <laughs> so um, it's great to see you. Some of you may have met Charlotte at one of our Meet the Graduate Alumni events. If you haven't attended one of those events, Come next year, they're usually around Halloween, oh, yeah. don't want to scare you. Um, so Charlotte, let's just uh, introduce yourself to our listeners and say a little bit about when you graduated, mm -hmm. when was that? 2014. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I always forget. Okay, so at the time of this recording, it'll be about five and a half years, yeah. five years right? Oh, wow, yeah, now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, oh, I graduated God. in 2014 um, and I was really on the fence whether to carry on studying. Okay. However, I, I managed to successfully get into the third sector uh, okay. in my job that I'm in. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've been in the third sector since I left university, actually. I've not not strayed from the path since <laughs> then. <laughs> um, however, that's through a lot of connections. But yeah, still in Lincoln, still kind of con contributing to the community and loving coming back to Lincoln to meet all the, your fine undergraduates who Great, normally you. have some real grilling questions oh, for me. Okay. Well, we might ask what sort of things you get asked from a student mm. perspective. So let's just explain things to listeners. So we're talking about the third sector, not-for-profit, volunteering groups. So you did some volunteering as a student. You did quite a yep. lot, didn't you? So in the end of my first year, I approached a couple of charities in Lincoln uh, to look for volunteering opportunities. I think at the time, almost every other course at Lincoln Uni must have done the same thing because there's lots of waiting lists. Right. So it was lots of, oh, we'll get back to you, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, I think I'd been interested in some of Adrian Park's work at ah. the time to do with addiction. So I'd right. approached Ad Action in Lincoln, um, which is just on Newland. And I just said, you know, have you got any volunteering opportunities? And they said, right, well, you've got to do this very brief course, um, okay. it, uh, Community Lincoln um, thing, which was basically about safeguarding and health and safety right. and things. Once you've done that, then you can go into volunteering. So I right. said, like, yeah, sure. And then I volunteered for the whole rest of my university. Right. Uh, life, really. Apart from, obviously, when I was doing my dissertation. Yeah, there. yeah. People do take a break. Mm. So what were you thinking at the time of graduating? Um, well, I mean, I would had that classic panic. I think everyone did just before graduating when lots of people ask you. What are you going to do? do? What are you going to do when you finish uni? I'd gone, ooh. Um, and I'd, uh, had I had a long-term partner at the time I'd met at university, and he'd managed to successfully secure a job in Lincoln. So I was thinking, well, Lincoln's going to be my town. My too. town. Like, yeah. this is going to be my base. So I thought I'd start really kind of investing in a few things. Um, I spoke to my ad action where I've been volunteering and said, you know, I'm looking for full-time work or at least part-time work now I've finished university. And I think that was really important because I think sometimes volunteers come and go and just sort sure, of mill yeah. it and out. Whereas they were like, oh no, that's really good that you've kind of approached us and said what you want to do. We'll keep you posted if there's any job openings. Um, a fixed term position came available and I went for it and I got it. Right. What was that doing? Um, so it was to be a recovery worker, or at the time it was called something different, but it was to be a recovery worker. So what I would do is I would work with a caseload of people who had problems with drug and alcohol issues. Um, and they would start me low and I would have to sort of get into the job but because I've been doing some volunteering so in my volunteering I'd done drug testing I'd done some low-level counseling skills I'd done some uh, training in motivational interviewing and uh, cognitive behavioral approaches like a low-level version okay. of it and I'd kind of had a bit of that experience um, and also getting more of, of kind of that biological experience. So for drug and alcohol, it's lots about blood-borne viruses oh, and okay. things obviously don't do in psychology yeah. in that respect. 
And I, um, yeah, so I became a fixed term. That was meant to be for six months. And then within three months of me being there, someone left and I said, I want your job. I want your yeah. job. <laughs> and they said, yeah, you've been really impressive and we'll offer you a full-time job. So I worked there for three years. Right. But when you work in, I think it's when you work in a charity sector, in the charity sector, you sort of meet people from other charities. So in my time, I met lots of people from other, like LAT and P3, which is the charity I currently work for. So after three years, I felt like I got my fill of drug, working right. with drug, drug and alcohol and uh, decided that I was going to move on. So I used one of my partners in kind of the field and I said, oh, she said, oh, I've got a job. And I said, oh, very interesting. So I went for that and that was to be working with um, people who are on probation, right. um, low level probation. So, what does low level mean? Like not high risk. Job? Yeah. So at the minute it's changing, but at the minute the probation split into two. So there's a low level, which is things like burglary, theft, shoplifting, things like that, and then you've got a high level, which is more the sex offenders violent and crimes. violent crime. Yeah. Yeah. So I did the low level stuff. So what we did was we were kind of working in the community with them. So I was out on the street with them all the time, kind of working through. Literally on the street. Literally right. on the street, working right. through benefits, um, mental health, housing, all that kind of right. different. Business. I think sometimes with psychology students, um, people don't realise that it's almost like to me like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm. Like you can't work on those sort of self-actualisation, good mental health if you've got nowhere to live or yeah. Or in no this money. entire time, I think psychology been a fantastic kind of foundation of learning kind of the ins and outs of people and what they think and, and whatever but I think when you actually get down on the ground with people you realize that it's not quite all like, it's not quite exactly like that like, however obviously is that because people are more complex or, or yeah and I think because when you're when you're working in something like a charity it's people who are mainly vulnerable adults with complex needs you know yeah. that it's not it's never just mental health or just yeah, drug yeah. use it's mental health drug use actual physical health and things like that yeah, yeah. so it was like lots of different stuff um however i really enjoyed the kind of criminal justice side of it so that's why i moved on to p3 and i kind of got into that that aspect of it um but in that time i'd looked at a lot of nhs jobs because i said like, um, maybe i'll go into that field but a lot of them were saying oh experience and whatever and i think to start with i thought oh i'll get experience and move on right into that kind of field um or but then after kind of a little while, I thought, no, I really like this. I really yeah, like the yeah. ethos of my company. I really like the people I work with. Then I sort of stayed and, and then I realised I really, really enjoy it. And that's kind of left me where I am. But on the way, I've met lots of people that have leapfrogged, if you know what right. I mean. So they've gone, oh, I've got, I've got a couple of years experience working literally right in the front, like on yeah, the street yeah. in the front with everybody. Um, and now I want to kind of move my way up. I want to learn a bit more. I want to get into the more of the health field and I want to kind of look at maybe even going back to university and studying again. Right. So I've met a lot of those people on the way, but I've kind of said, no, I'll stay. <laughs> what about your current role? Because that's relatively new. Yes. Yeah, so, so you moved away, didn't you, from the sort of front line? Yeah, I, I think after a four, three and a half, no, a bit longer than that, four and a half years, I sort of said, oh, um, I want to get a bit away from the front um, front line for a while um, but I still wanted to kind of help people so I moved into what I'm in the minute which is development which is really hard to explain okay. <laughs> however however it's basically I work for the business side of my charity and we look at where councils are saying oh we need a homeless street outreach team can right. you tell us whether you can do that and we say yeah we can do that this is all the evidence that we can do that and it's a lot more of that researchy side right. of it um, to prove that we can do a good job um, and actually help help people on the ground that need it. That's great. I mean, I think some psychology students, they do want to work on one-to-one -one or therapeutic sort of ways. Mm. Uh, but there are other people that want to develop more commercial sort of skills. Yeah. But at the same time, work for a company that's ethical, like you say, whose values you support, yeah. you know, rather than just... Uh, Google or a big corporation or something. Well, I think as well that's another thing. When you work for a smaller organisation or, or, I mean, my company's technically national, but a smaller organisation in respect of the hierarchy um, and the kind of spread of, of roles, you can be go from being a support worker like I was to kind of leapfrogging across and going, well, actually, I've got some skills that would be really useful to you because I can prove from the ground level that we actually work. Right. And they go, yeah, 
ace and <laughs> there's more kind of if you're looking for something where you're not quite sure exactly what you want to do yet maybe you go in on the ground and you go well, i don't really like this i find in the third sector there's more movement movement if right. you know oh, i'm yeah, gonna try yeah. this or i'll try that or right. actually i found that business side of it's much more me or oh no i don't like that i want to move yeah to this. so you're maybe not stuck in that rigid hierarchy that you might get in the public sector if yes. you go in and in the nhs or into a university or mm. something where you every step is a big promotion and yeah it's yeah it's much more fluid in right. that respect so maybe if someone's as i was in a little way not quite sure what they wanted to do when they <laughs> left going into the third sector can be maybe something a bit better for you to explore and then you can kind of work out where you want to go from there and not be so rigid in your decision oh that, that's great so you said that psychology students always ask you questions when you come back can you think of anything from a student perspective that people are really keen to know about they're there's a lot of fear of what it's actually like oh, right. and I think it's uh, you know I think they think that we've got these jobs and we must be indestructible because we must have just got the first job we walked into oh, and I think right. a lot of the time I'm like no it wasn't like that I applied for lots and lots of jobs right. before I got a job but you did have lots of volunteering didn't yes you? and yeah. you'd been very engaged as a student yes you yeah, were yeah. rep and things like that so yeah you were a proactive engaged and person some of them ask what what do, what shall i do and i go volunteer and if yeah. you if, if you are one of these people that does love to study 24 7 maybe be a rep because that can kind of coexist yeah with or your, a student ambassador you know, yeah something days, that so. you can do and to be fair a lot of organizations don't necessarily my com my um ad action wanted me twice a week some were like we only want you once a month because yeah. we want you to help sort out x y and z yeah, or yeah. we can actually only have you shadowing once a month because of our health and safety or whatever so you might find that you do a friday once a month yeah. and that doesn't really have to get in the way of your studies and that still proves that you went out of your way to go through like a volunteering interview process and then also to help another organization yeah. alongside your studies i mean i think it's more than just a sort of tick box on your cv because i think if you've never worked with vulnerable groups or people with complex needs or mm. addiction problems or mental health i can't understand how you would know that that's what you want to do mm. yeah yeah oh <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. and i think yeah. if you can do that while you're at university second year i really made that decision of right i think that's what i want to do and i kind of explored that for the next kind of year and then i still was a bit unsure before i started but i'd already had a bit of an idea i think if you have no idea in a way you can't prepare yourself so if you kind of get second year you do a volunteer and you go oh i didn't like that but i love statistics so i'm gonna like really ram into that then you can kind of follow that path yeah, instead or right. oh i really liked the businessy side of it when i saw it so actually i'm gonna kind of explore that way and i'm gonna try and do some more stuff that way it can leave you much more prepared and it can relieve some of that stress that you feel when people yeah. keep going what do you want to do <laughs> yeah. i always say you know it's more that I think I think the question. If people get asked that question, they should rebuff it because mm. I think it's really old-fashioned. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, don't you think it goes back to a time like, what are you going to be? Oh, I'm going to be a teacher. Yeah. And then you go and be a teacher for fifty years and then retire. Oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if you no, insult I'm, yourself, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should insult myself. But um, I think it's much more of a modern approach to career development to think. You know, what are my skills? What are my interests? What are my values? What can I offer an organisation? Mm. And what can they offer me? And yeah, that's I think sort of more fluidity, isn't it? Field of work has changed as well. I think once upon a time that was maybe what you did because it was what made sense and that's the way that the field of work l l lie, if you know what I mean. And But I think now a lot more companies want that. Can you do more than one thing? They don't just want you to be able to just do one thing. They want to be able to, can you do this? But could you also do that as well? And and you know, and a lot of companies are willing to. And this is another thing about charity sector myth that they don't pay you very much. Oh, they don't pay you very much. Or you at all. Some oh, people don't oh, even believe you get paid at all. You, you people go, oh, you get work for a charity. I'm like, yeah, I get, I get paid. Like, I get paid. <laughs> and I get paid quite well, really, because we can prove over and over again, time and time again, we can do a really good job. Yeah. So councils will say, yeah, well, we'll pay you that money because we think you're really good at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's where it is, but. I think a lot of people go, oh, I need to be corporate. I need to go into that corporate field because they pay you money and it's that's actually right. not what it's all about. <laughs> people want to live, eat, yeah, get yeah. wanted. But, you know, but it's actually, to this thing. in these fields, especially with you working with vulnerable people, you do tend to get paid okay because obviously it's quite, it's, it can be. One of your students once said, is it scary? And I was like, sometimes it is. Yeah. Sometimes, it's not, I'm not going to say it's all a lovely right. walk in the park, yeah, but, yeah. but those really good days are great. Right, those okay. really good days when someone says, 
oh, you know, I've not I've been clean for six months. You go, oh my god, yes, yeah, that that's what I did this Makes job for. Job worth it. Brilliant. Well, let's just sum up a few points. Yeah. So I think from what I've heard today, consider the third set of volunteer organisations mm. for charity. They pay you. Mm -hmm. You'll get experience. You can contribute to an organisation mm. that's really doing good work in the community. Mm. Uh, get your volunteering. Yes. Yes. I can't um, stress that enough. I cannot stress yeah. the volunteering. And again, I think that's, that's more than just, as I say, more than just a tick box. Because when I volunteered as a student, I just found it really relaxing and really good fun. Mm. And I met interesting fun people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, did, I wasn't even actually thinking about my CV. I was just thinking, what can I do on a Wednesday afternoon? Yes. There isn't like yeah, books and theories and... Yeah, and if you're not sporty or you're not whatever and you've got yeah, Wednesdays yeah. where everyone's busy, you can go, oh, I'm going to go volunteering yeah. today. So Yeah, and um, think about your career in a more fluid way. Mm. You don't have to make... You don't have to be a student and think, this is what I'm going to do. Or beat yourself up for not knowing what it is you want to be or what you mm. want to do. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I, can, I can't, again, I totally agree yeah, with there's, that as well. Yeah, there's organisations that will take you on. You can move into something like the work Charlotte did with support worker, but then divert into a counselling qualification or social work qualification or stay with that organisation like Charlotte did and move into more business side of the organisation. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I can't stress enough as well. I'm not just saying it when people I knew were doing those things alongside their work, you know, or oh, I'm going to do my doctorate part time because I want to do that. And it, it's, it's all possible if you really, you know, want to know where you want to go with your, your life. You can right. make that decision. All right. Well, Charlotte, so much. Appreciate you coming back. Absolutely. Do you have any final, 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 final comments before we say goodbye? Um, when I was at your alumni event, they asked me what was my top tip. And my top tip is buy a watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Buy a watch because when you go into even any normal office jobs, there's so often not a clock and you're, or you're not allowed at your phone or if you're in a prison or a criminal, you can't have anything like that. Buy a watch. It's the best thing I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's finally It just remains for us to say thank you for coming back. That's no problem. And we'll just say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye, bye.